Hello everybody, yes I'm here behind this contraption and what is this contraption? Well this is my hot wire foam cutter what's the bow anyway? I'll just lift it up, oops I'll caught my microphone there we go um, yeah this is the hot wire bow you can use to cut foam wings or anything else made of expander polystyrene, EPP or whatever you see it's quite a big um, piece of gear it's actually just made from some square box section aluminum for you in America, aluminium for the rest of us and it has at each end, it's really quite hard to do but you can see at each end it has a, a cross piece and if I turn it around there's another piece there between the two bottom sides there's a piece of wire runs right along here this is the cutting wire on the other side we have some bungee cord which basically tensions this wire at the top here make sure that this plays like a guitar now I built this some time ago I have used it quite a bit I'll put this to one side and some people have said can you show us what you did so here we go this is the control unit see that looks like a white box inside here there is a transformer and on the front there's a light dimmer that's all you need a light dimmer now you can run these hot wire bows from a 12 volt battery or a battery charger or that sort of stuff but you don't get very fine control over the wire heat and control of the wire heat is essential to get nice clean cuts with a minimum of drag and minimum of swarf so you know it's really really good if you build one of these boxes not expensive to make just you need the transformer you might be able to find one laying around in an old battery charger who knows what but uh, I'd recommend you get one if you're going to buy one that has two 24 or 28 volt windings you can use in series to get a total of up to 56 volts because believe it or not um, a long bow like that takes quite a bit of voltage and looking at this one yeah I'm using it at about quarter heat most of the time so maybe even if you've got just a, a 12 volt one with two 12 volt windings you could put those in series for 24 it might just work on 12 volts might be a bit cold for some occasions though anyway getting on with uh, what I've done I'll give you a look inside this box shall I it's time for the new RC model reviews mantra pull it apart see what's inside now this is just a an ABS case that I picked up from somewhere it was just a I think just a hobby case and it's held together with four screws that are coming out nice and easily there we go and you'll soon see what's inside it there we go hopefully that's got them under there we go open it up looks quite complicated but it's not there we've got a this is a toroidal transformer I got this on a special deal it doesn't have to be a toroidal one but the toroidal transformers are actually quite small for their power so I thought oh I could fit this in a little box which is what I did and inside here we've got the light dimmer over here just an ordinary light dimmer which goes in series with the primary side of the transformer that's the 230 or the 110 volt if you're in the USA and of course I like a good boy I put a fuse in here an inline fuse holder in case something goes wrong it won't blow up on you um, I've also earthed the core of the transformer which is what you do and well that's really it the, the secondary wires come out and there's two windings there's I'll oh, turn it over a bit more see there are two windings there is uh, two 28 volt windings on this one I bought them out and by linking them across here I put them in series so I get 56 volts of AC and you only need AC you don't need DC the wire doesn't care what kind of uh, whether it's AC or DC it's getting and AC is much easier to vary using the old light dimmer here and that's really all there is inside it it's not a lot is there simple you can build one of these yourself very quickly very easily very cheaply now I don't know what parts are available in the US what they are but I guess if people really want I can dig up some part numbers and do actually do a build on this if you want to see a full build video let me know otherwise I thought you know people are asking I'll show them what is inside my hot wire controller box and show you how to show you how my bow goes together it's all put together nothing special just a hacksaw and a drill and some nuts and bolts nothing fabulous but one of the key things to a good hot wire cutter is the choice of wire now I know a lot of people have emailed me and said how do I get hold of night chrome wire I've got I'm building a hot wire cutter and I can't get night chrome wire and the stuff I can gets too thin and it breaks blah 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 you know all sorts of problems so I'll show you what I use for my bow wire for cutting with the hot wire cutter just have to leave the scene for a moment excuse me please I'll be back in a moment here we go coming back here it is it's MIG welding wire you can buy this anywhere in fact you go down to the local welding or engineering shop they'll probably pull you off a couple of yards it was only neater this bow I've got here is about a meter and a half 
So you just need enough for a couple of lengths in case you break one. But this one here is 0.6 millimeters, 316 stainless steel MIG wire. I think it's 316. What does it say? Alloy 316L. It's 0.025 inches or 6 millimeters. That works just perfectly. And it's also very strong. Now it's a bit thicker than your average nichrome wire, but that doesn't matter because it's cutting around a template usually. So it just means you've got a little bit more waste, you know, a little bit thicker cut. Doesn't matter because this stuff is brilliant. It is very, very strong. So you can tension the bow up really tight and you don't find the wire dragging. Because one of the problems if you're using a very thin nichrome wire is that the wire itself will drag due to the friction and you'll get a kind of a, a curved line instead of a straight line between your templates. And that can make your rib your, or your wing come out with a big hollow in the middle and you don't want that. So this stuff's good. Tension it up with some bungees on the back end of the frame and you're good to go. It's really simple. And if people are really keen, I'll show you how to go about making templates to cut foam core wings, make them out of formica or even plywood. Metal's not such a good idea. It soaks the heat away from the tip of the wires. But uh, yeah, I'll do some more on this. I'm in the process. I did actually some years ago build a very big CNC foam cutter. It was absolutely brilliant. I might build another one if I get some time. And if I do, I'll document the process, make it a DIY project, I suppose. It's really simple these days. Really cheap too. But that's my hot wire foam cutter, the basic innards, the guts and how I, you know, the materials I've used. If you want more, put a comment on the bottom of this video, go to the rcmodelreviews.com website, join in the forums, ask there, and if everyone begs me nicely, I'll do a full video, build your own hot wire phone cutting bow and power supply. Thank you for watching, see you again very soon on RC Model Reviews.